Right, welcome. I'm going to try, uh, always look for positive bits of news. And <laughs> when I was trying to do something positive the last time, my phone cut out. So I'm trying not to waste too much time because I have a rubbish phone. Okay, and so I try to look for the really positive side of the of the DCU. And what I said in my last video about people and they always like change the tone when, uh, especially when they want to follow the most popular opinion. And the most popular opinion just now, and we said to anyone that's ever seen it, is that the Snyder Cut uh, or Snyder Film is a lot better and epic. Is that the door? Uh, so, and how, and now the CBR, comic book, r.com, I don't know who they are. They, they, they've always been, I don't know, on the line, I would say. Um... So they've now came up with an article, How the Snyder Effects Redeemed the DCU. And that is thanks to the fans, okay? The fans have turned around, noticed that whatever was happening next, it's really fails in comparison to what was originally planned for the DCEU. So it starts off, following the massive success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, studios have been trying to create their own shared universe in hopes of reproducing Marvel's winning formula. Winning Ugh, wouldn't go that far. Oh yeah, it's successful, but I, I would say it's manufactured formula. Uh, extended universe, which began. So DC's extended universe, which began with 2013's Man of Steel and is set to continue with Wonder Woman 84 later this year. The road for the DCU has been a rocky one over the span of eight films. Right? The lowest point for the franchise came in 2017 with the release of Justice League. But what was supposed to be the epic team-up that finally brought the DC's biggest heroes together became a critical and commercial failure upon release. But where Justice League's story ends, the Snyder Cup movement begins. Because we saw it, and the fans have got the right to go for something that was promised to us. And what was promised to us was a Zack Snyder movie, and not what we got. Like many box office flops before it, Justice League had a troubled production. Student executives at Warner Brothers were on edge about the film after previous DCU films, Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. Yeah, studio interference. That's You got worried, you got itchy feet and you wanted something to rival Marvel when you were in a desperate bid. Jeff Johns was desperate to be the next Kevin Feige and wanted that sort of slashy stuff and it wasn't worked. DCU, what Zack Snyder and Chris Nolan once said, DC doesn't need to be light, it can be dark. Right, received negative review. No, director uh, Zack Snyder and Chris Terrell always intended for the Justice League to be much more optimistic than the previous films because he was telling a story from how you become somebody that's, that's hated and disliked and mistrust to somebody polar opposite. Their previous film and studio were also unhappy with the direction of the franchise. During post-production, Warner Brothers ha hired Josh Whedon, the director of Avengers uh, Age of Ultron, to oversee scripts, rewrites, um, in order to make films more hopeful. Snyder stepped down from the film in May 2017, following the tragic death of the daughter. And they never go on about... Um, that it was actually he was forced out that Jeff John stepped in and um and done things behind the scenes. It wasn't just about the daughter. When Justice League finally came out in November 2017, it was described as a Frankenstein film by critics, one of which uh, biggest criticism was the editing, which was created a conflicting tone by haphazardly combining Snyder's darker version of the series with Whedon's light-hearted humour, it became clear that the Justice League reshoots and rewrites were far more extensive than previously acknowledged. Well said. The step away from the dark tone, of course, to correct a franchise many saw as inferior to the MCU. Unfortunately, Warner Brothers' plan didn't work and the film lost. The film was an estimated £60 million. It wouldn't have done that if Zack Snyder was left in charge. After the release of the films, disappointed fans of the DC campaigned online for Warner Brothers to release the original version of the film, which they dubbed The Snyder Cut. Release The Snyder Cut became a popular hashtag on Twitter. And while many didn't believe the cut existed, that didn't stop people from supporting it. As the time went on, more and more reports came out of Snyder's original version of the film. These included expanded roles, backstories for both main and supporting characters, direct references to both BVS and Suicide Squad, a significant different final battle with a redesigned vi uh, visual 
uh, an alternative ending that teased the arrival of major DC film Darkseid for a sequel that would never get made. Zack Snyder continued to post cryptic photos and films seemingly referencing his cut in addition because he was hurt. Okay? Because he was hurt. Actors voiced his support for the Snyder cut and Ray Fisher, whose character Cyborg had a much larger role in Snyder's vision, recently called out Whedon's unprofessional behaviour. Yep, on set during research and that's why Bat- Batman Ben Affleck decided he's had enough. He wants out. After three years of exhausting campaigning, Warner Brothers finally decided to give fans what they wanted uh, and announced Zack Snyder's Justice League will be released next year on HBO Max. The release of the once fable Snyder cut was uh, the interest not only for true believers but also mainstream audience who are eager to see if the film is truly as great and hype su- as the hype suggested. The heightened interest has seemingly done its impossible. It's led to re uh, valuation of the Snyder era DCU. This isn't the first time that extended cut of Zack Snyder's film widely sought after when BVS Superman was coming out in DVD an extended version titled as the Ultimate Edition was released. This version added 31 minutes of extra footage that included new scenes, characters, story beats, clocking at 3 hours and receiving an R rating. The Ultimate Edition is generally considered to be superior version of BVS. Uh, well, since they'll share the same issues with plotting and catharizing, not only is HBO Max realising the Snyder Cut, the streaming service is now championing itself and its exclusive streaming home for the Ultimate Edition. Yes, we don't want all this uh, cinema release BVS. We don't want uh, Justice League out there in mainstream Netflix. Get the Snyder Cut on your Netflix for, for people around the world. Warner Brothers' decision to embrace Snyder's DCU films after trying so hard to change them or ignore them uh, shows the studios may no longer view these films as an early stumbles that many initially made them out to be. The wider uh, uh, duration of the theatrical cut of Justice League and the passionate fan base that has grown around Snyder's films show that despite their their polarising receptions, Snyder works was consistent and fans would rather have a consistent story that appeals to them rather than a rush one that tries and fails to please everyone. Warner Brothers seems to be embracing this reality, recognising that DCEU fans would rather see Snyder's intended story rather than a version that mimics the tone of the MCU. Even if the Snyder Cut and Ultimate Edition doesn't appeal to everyone, uh, releasing them in the entirety rewards fans loyal and as a result has changed perception of the DCU. Wow, that... I'm going to quickly put this on chart. Right back in a second. Right. Sorry if I read that too 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 quickly there. I just seen my power level again going down, and I could not wait to get this on video. Okay. Um. It's a wee bit shorter. Again, I'll leave a link at the the bottom in the description. Um. Again, I mean it. It, it didn't go on and say because of these films now you're going to get all these other versions uh, of movies. We may, we may cross the fingers see Ben Affleck's Batman movie come to fruition. Probably at the same time the third chapter of Robert Pattinson's Batman comes out. Uh, but we're also going to have, uh, as I say, these. It's uh, really everything I've read about HBO Max seems to be that they're. Uh, director, storyteller driven. They're not studio driven. They want to be separate to uh, Warner Brothers. Um, and as I said earlier, Zack Snyder, Chris Nolan has and <laughs> has all said that, you know, you've got two different sort of movie making. You've got one that is done by the director where you can see their flavour. You can see um their heart and soul in a film, whether you've got a committee film, which are Marvel movies, <laughs> and by, uh, which is run by a committee and is made in a similar manufactured way, and those and that's what they try to do with Justice League and BVS. They try to make it a a, a cheap rip off to uh, MCU. And they didn't follow the director's heart and soul. And that's the difference. And as I say, read this, share this. Um, this is a positive step for HBO. I'm just, again, saddened 
that the UK is not getting it and many other countries around the world is not getting HBO. Uh, I wish there was a campaign much larger than myself that would hashtag make uh, HBO worldwide. I believe the only reason why HBO isn't coming over here is because of some agreement with Sky. Um, and I would rather H I would rather subscribe to them than I would any other company that's out there, any other forum, because I definitely, along with many of you, I hope, support the the art of a director and have his film so we can put an end to director's cut we can put an end to extended editions and when we go and see a film, a director's movie in the cinema we are going to see the, the director's film and not some hack job by uh, the studio well let me know in your comments below and um, thanks for watching